Psalm 138 verse 3 says, In the day when I cried out, you answered me, and made me bold with strength in my soul. Though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Uh, Psalm 138 was, was one of the verses that was encouraging for us um, throughout last year. Throughout 2018, um, we were going through IVF um, pretty much through the whole year. Um, and that was a really hard journey for us because um, obviously financially and emotionally, um, it's very draining to go through um, that, that process to be um, hoping and waiting for, you know, for God to do a miracle and for God to answer our prayers. Um, so it was, it was April of 2018 where we started the process of IVF again. We had one frozen embryo from our last cycle, um, still at the clinic, so um, in 2018. Um, around April we decided to um, go and um, get that reinserted. Unfortunately that didn't um, eventuate um, and so we had to start the whole process again um, and 2018 quickly became a bit of a struggle because we did two full rounds of IVF, two um, extra um, rounds of frozen embryo transfers. Um, one resulted in me being hospitalised and having to be operated on. Um, and also um, we had a lot of other complications just come out of it. And it just was like a real struggle and it almost felt like um, God um, was really closing like a lot of doors and then in December we did another round and it was successful but um, sadly um, that ended in miscarriage which was really hard for the both of us but throughout it all um, Alex um, has a very strong um, knowledge of the Bible and um, that really, he helped really remind us of all those verses and even when I personally felt like I was really, really sad, um, one major thing was I really felt God's patience for us and especially me because I felt like I should, because I've been through the whole process before, kind of have a better like handle of my emotions and all that kind of thing but um I still found myself really despairing and feeling hopeless but God really kind of like put his um hand of patience on me but also in his patience he still didn't allow me to like wallow in grief but still demanded growth um and yeah and it was um you know when you just constantly have like the answer seem seemingly being no from god or just wait and when you do pregnancy tests and they're just constantly negative and um and we have all those other complications and problems it was very easy to to have a mindset that was you know negative or defeated or um, contrary to god's word but um, you know, we just kept coming back to the qualities and the goodness of God, that of what it says in His Word, that He loves us with an everlasting love and He has good plans for us, plans to give us a hope and a future and that He's working all things together for our good. Um, and, and coming back to His qualities, that He's faithful and that He's unchanging and that He's sovereign and that, um, you know, that He's perfect so He doesn't make mistakes. So even when things seem like they're wrong, um, to us or where we just don't understand them you look to God and go but God understands it and God sees us God knows us and God's doing this for our good and eventually there will come a time when he does answer our prayers and he does bless us and we're going to look back and see his faithfulness and that he's been trustworthy 
and we can look back and see that um, how God shaped us in those times. So Psalm 127 um, was an important verse for me um, when I was reading through it, just praying this um, over my family and over um, Lina. And it says Psalm 127 verse 3, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. So Psalm 127, it's got these promises of God's people having children um, and that being a reward from God. So I took God at his word and said, um, you know, God, if that's your promise and if it's a good thing to have children and that children is plural, not singular, I say, God, that when the time comes, you will bless us with more children. Um, and I'll trust in you for when that time will be, that it will be the best time for us and that you know that best time. Um, and knowing that um, children are a heritage from the Lord and that he can bless us with, um, with many more children. It says in Psalm 130 that out of the depths I've cried to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. So knowing that, um, you know, in those hard places when we were um, crying out to God and praying to Him, that He was um, He was always hearing us and He was always attentive to us and that He knows what's best for us. It says He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. And it says He counts the number of stars and He calls them all by name. Um, so if he, if he knows the number of stars and he calls them by name, he obviously has much more value over us um, and over our lives. And it says that um, great is the Lord and mighty in power and his understanding is infinite. And just there again looking at that he, God is great and God is mighty in power and that he understands everything and he understands everything that's going on in our lives and he's working that for our good. So after the miscarriage, we um, were just waiting and praying again for um, whether to start um, you know, full round of IVF treatment again, which obviously isn't an easy process in any way. And um, just always going to God and saying, God, is this what you want? Or do you want us to do you know, something else or at a different time? But uh, it was around um, May that we, we started um, IVF treatment again and um, again it was it was really challenging as always and complicated um, with different things arising but um, 10 eggs were, were taken out um, through the process and um, which it which is okay to get 10 um, but then only three were fertilized which we found out the next day and which is a really low percentage again um, so we were hopeful with these three fertilized eggs um, that they would last and that um, you know that we would be able to have children and um, and we found out it was only one or two days later that um, two eggs um, just didn't look that great and so that they were going they called us in earlier to, to do a transfer of this embryo to say look um, it has the best chance of surviving um, if we if we transfer it now so uh, after it was transferred, it was again the next day we found out that the other two didn't make it. So out of 10 that were taken out through a whole month of um, blood tests and, and meetings and appointments and here we only have this one embryo that's um, been transferred and it's really, it seemed like our last hope and our, our only hope. Um, and one passage that's been really important for us is um, the passage in 1 Kings 18 with Elijah. Um, so you've got the people of God in a drought and you've got the prophet who's um, who's praying and believing for the clouds to come and this the rain to come and this drought to be over. Um, and so he's, he's praying and um, he's, uh, he sends out his... Um, we'll make it out. Yeah. So, um... Back when we first had the Luna, Alex actually reminded me of this um, particular story and um, I've carried this throughout 
every single um, process of IVF um, because I don't know if anyone's ever seen an embryo but when you look at an embryo um, it looks a bit like a cloud and in this particular story Elijah is um, in there's a big drought in the land and he um his servants keep on saying like look we've been praying there's no rain and he keeps sending them out to the horizon saying you know look for that cloud the size of a man's fist and he's like rain's coming and they keep on going no rain and eventually a servant comes back and goes yes I see a cloud the size of a man's fist and rain came mm. and um, so we're happy to say that rain's finally come and in March 2020 we'll be having another little bub. <laughs> Shut him, <it's> 2.0. <laughs> Here's our little cloud and here is little baby seven weeks seven old. Seven weeks. Now it'll probably be at 12, 13. June March, praise God. <laughs> Hosea 6, 3. Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge him. As surely as the sun rises, he will appear. He will come to us like the winter rain, like the spring rains that water the earth. 